Welcome back. You've been listening to the Flow Friday Sports Show on Flow FM. It is time to catch up with Bruce Phillips for the last time in 2023 to talk all about the local sprint car action. And there's plenty happening, as there always is. And it's great to welcome Bruce back to the airwaves. How are you, Bruce? Yeah, good evening uh, there, Ellis. Nice to be back on the Flow Friday Night Sports Show. And, uh, of course, could be listening to the repeat on the Saturday morning. And it is all things Speedway in this segment. And we are revved up, pardon the punt, absolutely revved up. The bags are starting to get packed and uh, all but uh, hopping in the car and doing the big five nights of racing over seven days with the big Speed Week starts on the 26th of December. Boxing Night at Murray Bridge Speedway. But let's have a quick look before we get into that at last week's uh, events and uh, results. Absolutely. You're that revved up, Bruce, that you're doing my job for me, putting the Saturday morning plug in there. Let's uh, indeed cast <laughs> our attention back to last week, and we had some action across the traps. We'll go to Mildura first, Bruce. Give us the lowdown of what happened there. Oh, look, firstly, over there at Mildura, big hats off to the... Uh, the staff over there, and, and most of them volunteers, pretty much 99% of them. And they had about, uh, you know, four or six uh, real annoying uh, gusty showers come in, and they were able to uh, work the track back. Now, what I mean by that, for those unaware, uh, because it's an outdoor sport and it's obviously on dirt, and uh, you get the, the precipitation come down, it makes it too slippery and too dangerous. So with it just on the top, they can actually uh, put a scarifier on the tractor and cultivate it in and dig that track and turn it over so the dry stuff comes up on top and then they roll it in with the trucks and the vehicles and consequently, at the end of the day, they can get it back up to uh, safety for the drivers and a uh, bit like, uh, you know, putting the uh, the mixture in the, uh, in the gravy and uh, keeping it just nice and firm. Uh, rather than overdoing the mixture and uh, and making it all sloppy. But, uh, look, it really was well done by the track curator down there at uh, Mildura Simmons Speedway. Let's have a look at the results down there. And it was South Australia, the boy out of the Riverland, a bit of a Manham boy too, is uh, sponsored by uh, Lee Carl out there at Manham. And it was Brendan Quinn. In the Quinn train, the S14 getting the chocolate up there at Timmins Speedway. And look, he really did have this car absolutely motoring on the magnificent, brand new, refurbished uh, uh, venue up there. They've, as you said before on the program, they've upgraded the wall and the, and the net, the catch fence, uh, and of course uh, the, the lighting. They've spent a lot of money on the lighting, and it is one of the state of the art facilities up there now. Coming in second place was Chad Eli in the contracted Parrot-owned car, S98. So a good result there for Chaddy Eli in uh, this uh, mainline Dynalog Dynamometer series, all-star sprint cars. And Rusty Hickman. Seems to have dropped back to the uh, the pro sprints in the 360s. Rusty Hickman uh, in recent times in the V40, and he parked it on Victory Lane in third place. Paul Solomon in fifth. And a good drive by Keki Fallon out of Lockton. Uh, Keki doesn't drive a lot. Uh, he hasn't had a lot of uh, seat time in the last 12 months. And a pretty good effort there from uh, Keki in the S78 to get in the top five. Uh, our lady racer, Lisa Walker, in the S4 came in, in sixth place. But it's a great night up there. Big crowd, they tell me, uh, for the mainline Dynalog Dynamometer Series, uh, round two. And uh, that continues on uh, in a couple of weeks to down at the Premier Speedway with night three on the day after New Year's Day. Let's have a look at other results around the country last weekend. It was a high-tech oil pink night, the USB Queensland round three. And it was a great night up there at the, the home of Toowoomba. And it was Toowoomba's favourite son up there, Lockie McHugh in the NQ7 driving at home in first place to get the checkered flag in absolute uh, real good form he is, McHugh, and he really is running into uh, some great form ahead of the big shows. The month of money in January with the Classic and the Australian title both being held down there at Premier Speedway's Sun Gold Stadium. Uh, Lachlan McHugh was uh, 
really didn't have it all his own way. Jai Corbett, a much improved driver out of the North Queensland. He was in second place in the NQ10. Luke Oldfield, one of uh, the great drivers up there in the Queensland in the Q17, was in third. Michael Stewart, fourth, and Nick Well in fifth place. Let's turn our attention next uh, to the, um, uh, the, the big nominations. That pretty much wraps up last weekend. Oh, I've got a bit of a speed car result here. Uh, Matt Jackson, Casey O'Connell and Charlie Brown, the top three there in the Toowoomba high-tech oil uh, support class on the night. So uh, good effort from those drivers. Let's turn our attention uh, to this week, mate. Let's do that indeed, Bruce. All right, well, it's all about the Premier Speedway. 55 nominations, Bruce. Doesn't get a whole lot bigger. Oh, mate, that is massive. It really is. Uh, I feel like it's fair to say it's the prelude to the Classic. Yeah, the Classic usually gets about 110 nominations. Uh, look, this could be even beaten this year because look at the cars racing here, 55 of them in total. And uh, look, uh, some Americans amongst the field and uh, look at it. We look at the likes of uh, uh, some of the Americans involved here in uh, uh Let's have a look at the Australians first. You've got Jamie Beale in the V35. Uh, you've got Grant Anderson, who's a real... He just loves racing at the Premier Speedway. He really has got a good record there. Lachlan McDonough in the S38, going well for South Australia. Marcus Sons in the N47. Uh, Corey McCullough, the big news out of Victoria, back in the V90 for this event. So that is huge. Uh, a former... Uh, a former uh, uh, for the Classic, he's back. Uh, and the former um, Classic winner is Corey McCullough. Uh, let's have a look at uh, those Americans that have been uh, nominated here. You've got to the likes of, um, uh, as I just get my page to click over, Chase Randall in the USA 9, uh, one of the big inclusions for this event. And uh, look, that is just fantastic for uh, the Australian summer to have, uh, what, 10 on the list now coming into uh, Australia to race for the uh, the Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic. So a big event down there. The Max has raced to honour one of the greats, Max Dumpty down there, and uh, what he's done across Speedway in Australia. And it should be a big meeting down there. I'd say a packed house at Sun Gold Stadium for this 55 nomination, a prelude really for the Classic. And uh, look, there'll be some... Uh, some uh, really great racing over there. I'd say it'd be probably over five heats, 11 cars in a heat. Um, so it could provide some great action across this weekend, the only uh, sprint cars on the mainland. The other event for the weekend is down at uh, Carrick Speedway in Tasmania. And not a big event down there this weekend. Uh, just six cars on the nomination list. Let's go through them. Uh, Mathia Bassett, uh, Bissett is uh, on the list. Tony Klasner, Luke Redpath, Jack Crossan, Matthew Peck, and Lachlan Robbins. Because uh, a few of the drivers down there are starting to make their way to the mainland uh, for the upcoming um, nights of racing. So we think of Jock Goodyear and uh, also Tate Frost. And good to see Chris Johns coming across for some upcoming races at Premier Speedway. So a little meeting down there for the sprint cars at Carrick Speedway. Good little venue down there. Six cars nominated for that lot of racing. Uh, I did have those uh, list of uh, nominations. Uh, I'll just try and get them up. Uh, uh, but before we go into that with those nominations, let's have a bit of a look at um, the shockers on the car. And uh, look, they, they actually uh, get pretty serious, some of the teams. And they've got these machines that actually test the shockers before they use them. So, and they go by all the pounds of pressure, and they like to get around about 20 pounds out of them. And these shockers they put on the car, they just don't pull them out of the packet and stick them on. Everything's pre-tested, so they get really serious, these sprint car drivers, and uh, try and get things uh, really up to scratch, uh, ready for a night's racing. Uh, we just rock up. We sit on the hill and watch, but the preparation these guys put in before a night's racing is just unbelievable. And uh, look, some of it uh, is just, uh, you know, to have a, a rollover in a night, they've got to rebuild the car for the next night's racing, and that can just be a, a real work of art. Let's have a look at the events coming up. So we've got, of course, Murray Bridge 26th and 27th. 
speed week. It is going to be a huge week. Five nights racing over seven days. And uh, look, it goes on to Mount Gambier's borderline speedway on the 28th. They have a rest and uh, get back into it at Avalon on the 30th. And then New Year's Day, it all rounds up. Five nights of racing in seven days at Premier Speedway, Sun Gold Stadium. And already the nominations averaging about 30 a night for each of those events. So uh, quite a big, uh, a uh, big sort of a show there coming up. Let's have a look at those nominations. They've just come to hand for uh, the Americans. Brad Sweet, Rico Abreu, Brock Zierfoss, Corey Eliason, Caleb Henry, Chase Randall, as we said, Sheldon Horton Child, Carson Macedo, Aaron Rutzel, and Justin Peck. So some big names coming across, hit double figures now from America for all the action across here down under. It will be a huge month of money with, of course, the... Uh, the uh, getting underway the 1st of January with the fifth night of the Speed Week. So the All-Stars down there at the Premier Speedway on the 2nd and then another event down there on the 6th before getting into the main event. The Grand Annual Street Car Classic, three nights over the Saturday the 20th uh, weekend and, of course, the Australian title should be a huge back end of January with uh, the Australian title up for grabs, Ken Doc, year, good year retain his Australia one. So big weeks ahead, mate, and uh, certainly looking forward to uh, getting back in the new year and wrapping up all what's happening and previewing those big events. You bet, Bruce, and for all those listening with an avid interest in sprint car and speedway action, head to the local Sprint Car Photography and Media Facebook page for all your updates. It is religiously well-kept. Well, Bruce, it's been great catching up with you and digesting all of the speedway and sprint car action across 2023, and we do look forward to doing it all again next year. Have a great Christmas and a very happy new year, and thank you for all your efforts this year, Bruce. Yeah, thanks, mate. I'll just wrap up. Big thanks to the uh, Premier Speedway team down there, uh, recognising our uh, our media with a local sprint car photography. We've been running that for around about uh, 11, 12 years now, and uh, great for them to recognise us. And this year, it is a first for our team. We'll have a corporate box to bring all the action and the results. So it really is uh, a credit to our team and how far it's come and uh, just amazing uh, the amount of viewers getting on and checking out, uh, even the drivers checking out what's going on across the country. And a big thanks to the Premier Speedway. And we look forward to having some uh, magnificent first-class facilities to run uh, the media side of things uh, in those events across the classic and, of course, the Australian title from Sun Gold Stadium. Take it easy thanks, over the mate. festive period, Bruce. We'll see you then.